too long than I thought it was. <laughs> gonna go. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm Deontay Burton, a.k.a. Mr. Short Dollar himself. Uh, welcome to my live feed tonight. Tonight, we're talking about how to build wealth faster when you buy tangible assets. I want to welcome you guys uh, to the feed. You guys know I'm Mr. Short Dollar. We talk about personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and investing. And uh, right now, we stream live on, Inst on uh, Instagram, Facebook, t TikTok, and our main platform, which is YouTube. So again, I want to welcome you all, and I appreciate you guys tuning in. I see everybody got uh, 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 interacting on the different uh, uh, platforms between YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I will answer all your questions. I promise you that. But what I what I try to do is go through parts of the show and then come back and answer all your questions. So if you do have any questions or anything, now if you have a question pertaining to what we're talking about as far as with the tangible assets, I will answer them then. But if you didn't think outside of that, I promise you at the end of the feed, I'll come back and answer all your questions, okay? But again, I, I do want to welcome you guys into the live live uh, uh, the live feed tonight. And again, I told you, what, you know, I'm, I'm Mr. Short Dollar with the personal finance and business, entrepreneurship, and investing. Just stay abreast of everything. Uh, if you're looking at us on YouTube, make sure you hit that dollar sign in the bottom right-hand corner. But also, no matter what platform you follow us on, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, 
we do push you to go to the YouTube channel because that's where we have over 200, near 300 videos uh, on the YouTube channel. We get a lot of uh, traction in regards to the videos we did with finance and grant opportunities, things like that. But like I said, again, uh, make sure you go to the YouTube channel. That is the main platform. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's where the majority of our videos are housed there right now. So again, please you do that. If you get it, once you do subscribe, if you do me one favor, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit hit a uh, text in, I subscribe in the uh, in the comments. You just put that in so I know you did subscribe to the channel. But the, the subject we're talking about tonight about building wealth fast with dealing with uh, tangible assets, this is a great topic because a lot of people don't understand tangible assets, okay? Just to let you guys know, I am an accountant by profession, okay? And I've been in the financial service industry about 25 years. Uh, my main company that I own is Majestic Business Services. We're celebrating our 20th year in business this year. And um, we've been doing quite well. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, over the years, I've had different business in regards to, you know, beauty salons, um, the, the tax business, barber shops, cleaning business, uh, speaking. I know I'm forgetting something, a lot of other stuff that I've, you know, done well with that I've totally messed up, uh, was in the music industry, had a studio downtown Atlanta. And if anybody can tell you how to book up some money and mess it up in the music industry, I am the man. <laughs> I can really tell you how to mess it up because your boy really blew that one up. But um, uh, I do have a, a very big passion for entrepreneurship, help people out in entrepreneurship, also with finance and personal finances and have been able to grow your business and stuff. So again, Please, please, please welcome yourself to Mr. Short Dollar. But again, if you get the opportunity, go to the YouTube channel. Mr. Short Dollar, subscribe to the channel. Again, if you're in the comments or anything, make sure you hit subscribe, follow, whatever platform you're in, just so I know you guys are there. Hold, please hold tight with your questions and everything till we get um, uh, to the end of the show. And I got you guys covered on all your questions, okay? Well, tonight, what I want to talk about in regards to the... Um, the subject in regards to tangible assets, you hear so many people talking about uh, investing in stocks, trades, Forex, Bitcoin, real estate and everything. And I go back to and just give a personal story uh, about myself. Back in 07, 08, when the real estate market crashed, right? And everybody was sitting there going crazy. Everybody had those interest only loans. You're making $20,000 a year. You got your $400,000 house. It was crazy. I mean, you know, it was, you know, tail end in the Clinton years. And I mean, everybody was going bananas. Everybody had a such and such dot com. I mean, everybody in mom was, I mean, this was really like the pinnacle of entrepreneurship and the market crashed. And um, I remember how you had, your, your home value may have went from three, four hundred thousand dollars to fifteen thousand dollars within like 48 hours. No banks were lending out money. Nobody could do anything. Everybody was laying people off. And you've seen all these banks, because you know uh, FDIC insured with banks are uh, up to $250,000. You've seen all these banks just closing and whatever. Then you've seen everybody consolidate. It was crazy. Like I said, that 07, 08, 09, it was ridiculous. And uh, my mentor, uh, a brother named Daryl Crawford, man, he's one of my mentors. Daryl put me on game about, hey, D, look, man, because he had already went through the one, um, what was like maybe, early 2000s or something like that, right for 99, maybe a little before that. But anyway, he had lost a, a substantial amount of money, his 401k. It was real big on, you know, let me know about the, uh, uh, knowing not to have all your money set into the market or even just in real estate. He said, man, you got to have some things that are tangible. Daryl was a real big, he is a, a real big jazz collector fan. So he had all this stuff with uh, Billy Holiday, Charlie Parker, uh, Thelonious Monk, all these, you know, different collectibles that he had, and he just started sharing them with me, and what he was doing, also at that time, so again, you know, this is like the heyday of eBay and everything, he was putting this stuff in and showing me, man, look how much this stuff is worth, because what the advent of the internet did was it made, uh, uh, how can I put it, collecting a lot more accessible, right, so even, you know, um, when people would, you know, want to buy a certain thing normally before the internet exploded, things that were hard to get were more expensive. But then now you, with, with uh, eBay, you can sit there and go on. Uh, and keep in mind, I was talking about early 2000s now. You could go online, find something in China, find something in Belgium, France, Canada, and get it for a whole lot cheaper because you had a more bigger pool of people uh, to buy from. But you also had access to more items that you didn't normally see. Like you see a, 
uh, 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 Charlie Parker, uh, uh, saxophone, a uh, signature from the Thelonious Monk, and he was showing me this stuff. And like these people pan, like especially in, like in Europe, they're real big on uh, black jazz artists. He for paying five or ten thousand dollars for like things like old album covers, not the damn album, just the album cover with maybe a signature on it. And it just opened my eyes, like, look, man, these are the kind of things that you really need to be getting on top of because again, assets like that they don't appreciate. You know, and you start talking about when you look at, you know, fast forward to what happened recently. Unfortunately, you've seen the death of Kobe Bryant and you've seen how he, all of his, you know, memorabilia went through the roof uh, uh, because he was dead. You've seen his rookie card, jerseys that he may have signed or game worn. They went through the roof. And, you know, these were assets you talk about would probably spend little or no money on anything like that. Now, again, this is not glamorous stuff. But we're talking about building wealth through things outside of, you know, anything speculative. What I mean by speculative, we're talking about guessing. And, you know, how I guess now, you, do you know if a, a certain item is going to be worth a lot of money in, in, uh, in the future if you uh, buy a certain shirt or a baseball card or a book? No. But it's a whole lot damn cheaper to try to spend fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in Bitcoin. I can tell you that. And it's a whole lot less dangerous. Uh, than doing it and i'm not opposed to you guys not doing trading or option trades and stuff like that but again i got an undergrad in finance right i got a master's degree in supply chain management i'm a numbers person right i'm one of the people i can figure out all those kind of math problems that look like alphabets and stuff like that and i say that to say that hell i know the actual kind of commitment that you got to take to be successful with doing it a lot of times people have success with investing and trading and to be honest with you they're just damn lucky i wish everybody much success in any endeavor they do but you got to respect the game when it comes to certain things you don't know how to do so i think you'll have a whole lot less you know risk by sticking some things that are probably a little bit more safe now again they're not as exciting they probably won't generate uh value as quick as some other things but i will tell you this they will uh, uh be able to appreciate you know, probably 10 times, 100 times more fast uh, or bigger than the actual investment that you made. Before we get started, I start, you know, running my mouth again. Let me do a little, see everybody tuning in. Hey, everybody, I see you guys in there. Uh, Adari, Yashar, Yasharala, and I know I messed your name up, young lady. I apologize about it. Uh, you're seeking a business mentor. You can always reach out to me. All my contact information is located uh, in all the description section of the YouTube videos. Even with a, a find a willing a business, a female business mentor, I can be able to find somebody for you, but just reach out to me through the contact. So I uh, appreciate everybody tuning in again. If you got any individual questions outside of what we're talking about tonight, hold tight for my answer, everything at the end of the feed. But if you have any questions in regards to what we're talking about now, feel free. I see one of my kids, or two of my kids, uh, see PJ and Tori. Hey, what's going on, fellas? See both of you guys and tune in. That's cool. Isn't it? You, I don't feel as bad. You know, your kids get grown. You worry about forget about pops. And I see two of them checked in on me. Um, now, going back to what we're talking about, the actual uh, building wealth faster using tangible assets. And I gave a whole story about when the market crashed. So Daryl put me on game in regards to getting those. So what I was, I really was green with that. But I will, something I thought about, I've been doing my whole life, and that's collecting comic books. Um, I'm not a pack rat, but things that I do buy, I keep, right? And here's the deal. I have a collection of comic books from, you know, when I started collecting comic books as a kid back in the 80s, and I would buy even some of the older comic books from the 60s and 70s. And what I want to share with you guys is some of the assets that I've acquired. Because again, we're talking about tangible assets. We talk about tangible assets. These are assets that you actually can touch. Collectibles, things like that. You guys remember the Beanie, the Beanie Baby Boom and things like that. Again, those are the kind of things that, again, you're not being speculating or doing it. You can put, you know, a certain amount of money because in, in those assets and be able to get a large return for the actual amount vested. You guys know we hear about Jay Z became a billionaire. A good chunk of that is in fine art. The average person can't afford buy these, you know, um, high end paintings like Jay Z did. So realistically, we got to have a little game plan in regards to what we're doing. I'm not saying put all your eggs in one basket. You know, I'm a finance guy. Okay. I am saying you should have a little bit of a lot of a little bit of somewhat everything in your portfolio, right? 
So if you want to have, you know, your 401k, one piece of it invested in this, you may have some stuff in real estate. You may have some stuff in Bitcoin, just like that. I don't want to invest too much. Uh, and I'm not against Bitcoin. I'm just saying uh, I, I will leave some of that stuff for pros uh, with doing it. But again, never, it's not about you agreeing with me. I'm just giving my personal opinion. Um, even just with the stocks, the mutual funds, the real estate. Uh, but again, we start putting this, this part of being the tangible assets. Like I said, we're talking about the collectibles, the things you can actually touch. Okay, things you actually touch. And that can be, like I said, comic books, cards, autographs, um, 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 statues, whatever, things like that. Uh, I'm going to do a video again uh, on uh, NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Uh, that's been one of the, the new big things in regards to uh, what people are looking at investing in, just that digital footprint of holding some tangible assets like this. But uh, what I want to do is kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about in regards to tangible assets. Right here, guys. Next, I've been a comic book collector. Right here, this is a old Spider-Man's uh, diary. Right here, this is a comic book that it was uh, kicked out back in the uh, mid '80s, and it just redid some of the old Spider-Man comic books. And I have a lot of comic books that are older than this, but I just want to share you guys some of my collections with this. And again, this is just we're talking about tangible assets, right? Now, again, these comic books I bought. This is a dollar fifty. Back in 86, 87, this is a little bit got some wear on and everything, so it's not going to be worth that much. But again, we're still talking about dollar fifty. This book I know is worth over twenty dollars now, mint condition and everything. And I do have a majority of them. Some of them been damaged over the years, but vast. And then we talking about maybe ten percent of my portfolio that have some kind of damage. Most of them are in pristine condition. But these these books are probably at least right now worth just twenty dollars a piece. This is a dollar fifty, and I'm, and I'm speaking on the low end with that. This is a dollar fifty. OK, these these two books in the, uh, are over 35 years old each. And I have even some old comic books right here. Some new mutants right here. Again, same round by the same time. Thirty five books. I mean, uh, thirty five years old. And I, and I know this book here is up over worth over one hundred dollars. And uh, I have a collection of thousands of comic books that I actually even got a, a carry insurance on. Uh, we're doing that, but I, we, now we're going back to what we're talking about the uh, tangible assets. And when I, the whole thing that spurred me a lot when I talked about uh, when Kobe died, you know, unfortunately, those uh, high memorabilia was going. I did a video when he passed uh, over a year ago. What was it, a year ago or two years ago? I'm sorry. I told people immediately, you know, uh, go and start, you know, looking at some of these tangible assets with that. You guys know I'm a big, you know, I'm a native Atlanta, you know, real west side boy. And I was pushing everybody then. You know, we had just drafted Trey Young and and I ever, you know, people really didn't know who he was. And I was telling people, look, man, go get a kid rookie cards. And then you seen Trey Young led the Hawks to the uh, Eastern Conference final this year. These are Trey Young rookie cards, right? Mint condition, right? Five bucks each. You say this kid have a stellar career. You know, go Hall of Fame career, which you can look at doing. You're hoping that the odds are he's going to do well. He's, he's nothing but, what, 22 years old now. Play 10, 10, 15, 20 years in the league. This $5 investment can easily, easily be worth five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, you know, 20 years from now. Again, and what I tell people to do, you get these $1 card, hell, buy 20 of them. What you done lost? So it's not like that. And that's the thing about it. If you bought a Kobe Bryant card, 20 of them for a dollar, and all of them worth ten thousand dollars, and you got twenty of them. You do the math. Easy two hundred grand. So just think about this, guys. This is not you're not putting your whole life on the line with doing this kind of stuff. We're talking about tangible as the thing you can that you can touch and feel. You got to think outside the box. You can't always go with trendy or whatever. You, see, I mean, I know it look cool. You see the brother and sister and they Bentley and they day trading and they doing all that kind of stuff. Cool. Let them do that. Let them do. They got time to do it. You got to go to work every day. So we got to be smart about what we're putting into it. Okay. You're talking to a person, like I said, again, with a very, very vast financial background. I got all my alphabets behind my name, got all the education. I'm telling you, it's not that easy, right? And ain't nobody, I ain't scared about making any money. If anybody loves making money, Deontay Burton does. But I'm very cautious about when I tell people and give people advice in regards to different assets you can acquire. Here's a Zion Williamson card. Zion Williamson also a uh, stellar young player in the NBA about boatload of his rookie cards. I mean, I got more cards and everything. I tell people when these guys come in, get them early. But like I said, again, what's your loss if you're on about, you know, 10 of them, 10, 20 of them, whatever. They guys that had great careers and stuff, look, come on now, you do the math. 
you do the math and everything. So I just want to kind of encourage you guys to kind of think outside the box. Give you guys a couple more other things. This is a, a funeral program for Coretta Scott King. Again, you never know. You know, unfortunately, when she passed, and what well, is back in 06. It's to let you know what kind of I got a <laughs> a vast amount of things in my collection. So again, this is a funeral program when Coretta Scott King passed. This is actually one from the funeral and everything. And I got like they had boxes of them and everything. I got I got several of them. And again, you just never know. If you kind of Google this, you never know. It may be worth five, ten, twenty, uh, twenty dollars. You never know. Somebody might make a hit movie about her in the next five, ten years. Anything can happen. You never know. The things of it is just I I, I even bought when uh, Barack Obama was first elected and the second uh, second election. I have every magazine from uh, uh, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Ebony Jet, all those mag. You have to think outside the box. We're talking about things to build well faster we're talking because again we start talking about that speculative money and that's being the stocks and trades again i have a finance degree you're talking to somebody that knows that stuff inside out get it i get it and it's worth it. and i do do a lot of investing trading in the market i get it but it has to just be a a, a percentage of your uh, of your portfolio guys it has to be a percentage of it because what goes up can come down and you just don't know there are some things over the test of time that increase but again those kind of things are just like these assets they're going to accrue value and grow bigger as time passes. it's not going to be anything that's going to happen to you overnight okay so we got to be smart and we got to be patient i understand right like i said i grew up in bankhead highway if anybody know about me and i have no money i i know so again i can understand the want to feel like you got to have more money you want to you know you want certain things i get it but uh we start talking about building wealth and being uh, uh financially independent sustainable and things like that it ain't gonna happen over time. You can make a lot of money. A lot, it's a lot of people out here make a lot of money. We, I don't think even in the African American community, we had a shortage of high income earners. We had a very big shortage of people that are wealthy. All right, you got a lot of people out here making six figures now. They're making six figures, but they're also spending six figures. Check the check the check. It don't matter. It's no different between them than the person making twenty thousand, the person making a hundred thousand. Just one person just got bigger bills, but both of them down stressing for payday to come. Okay. Now I'm trying to teach you guys, you know, how to think outside the box, put yourself in a position where, you know, you're looking at, okay, I'm set for life. I got this whole uh, uh, portfolio investment thing set up that I probably spent crumbs on over the years. Okay. A couple more things I want to just, and again, I'm telling you guys about, about tangible assets, things that you can touch, easy way to build wealth, felt in a fast way to do it just by thinking outside the box. These are some uh, airline tickets, you know, your boy travel, you meet different people. And just with some signatures on it, maybe worth something, may not be. But again, we're talking about thinking outside the box, right? I got a uh, who I got? I got Pat Riley. Pat Riley, GM, former GM of the uh, Miami Heat, uh, former head coach of Miami Heat, former head coach of the Lakers, a, a, a NBA Hall of Famer. Got his signature. I got Jerome Bettis, the bus right here. Hey, they even say, "What's up, Poochie?" I got "What's up, Poochie?" on there, you know. Who I got right here? This is Dwight Howard's signature. Guys, and I got tons of these kind of things. Like I said, again, we're thinking outside the box. Okay, thinking outside the box and just sharing a couple of things. One thing about it, and one people that know me, I'm real big in art, I'm real big in abstract art, matter of fact. And two two pieces I want to show share with you guys is um with the art. And Daryl kind of put me on this with what we're doing is this is a piece from a brother named Harold Smith. I'm a Facebook friend with Harold Smith. Matter of fact, he's a, a artist out of uh, Kansas City. Most of his pieces now are going anywhere, starting on the low end, 3500 But I see someone listed around by eight grand. I bought this, I think, with a brother. I ain't going to say this in a negative way. With a brother, probably was a starving artist for $75 back in, um, I think this is old, maybe old, yeah, maybe 07. 07. I'm thinking maybe early in the net, but like this is actually a picture of uh, that he did of a uh, uh, John Coltrane, the abstract jazz artist. And like I say again, sometimes you see this kind of stuff. I'm like, what the hell is this? I like it. Like I got tons of pictures and stuff. Some hung up, some just put up and everything. But again, we talking about what? Thinking outside the box, right? So if the brother picture, if I got this for seventy five dollars, shit, over twenty years ago, right? And now they're selling for his, uh, selling for seven thousand or Selling for eight grand now. Come on now. This your damn 401k. Okay. This is 401k right now. Okay. Let's be smart. Now, again, I'm not trying to think about rushing because 
Nobody can go out there and look at buying all the uh, Jean Baptiste, uh, John, I think uh, Jay Z bought the Jean Baptiste uh, piece. These pieces starting at over uh, half a uh, half million, quarter million dollars. No, 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 no. You find your piece that you like, an artist that you like, somebody's out there grinding, you know, doing their work, and you liking their work coincidentally. They're doing good, you know, because you do want to make sure you like the work, right? And you, you see them uh, 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 out there putting in work and getting a name for themselves. Coincidentally, you like the work and stuff. And all things, you know, may not necessarily be looking at from an investment perspective. You got you got the pieces. Uh, you seeing them grow. And as they grow, so with the value of the uh, piece that they created. This is another piece. This is a prize piece of mine. This is an abstract painting of Jimi Hendrix. This is from an artist named D. Heard out of Dallas. Now, D. Heard pictures, I paid a little change for this. I paid a little change for this when I didn't have no change. <laughs> I had to borrow a little bit <laughs> to get this one. This is, I think I paid about, oh man, I paid about a, a grand for this. D. Heard's uh, paintings right now start off around about, around about seven grand, so I'm 10. She's an uh, artist based out of Dallas. She's a, she's a she's another abstract artist. This is actually my man, Jimi Hendrix. You guys know I'm a real big jazz, old rock uh, fan, you know, big time hip hop, but you know, I still like like it and everything. But this is my man, Jimi Hendrix, and uh, D. Heard did this. Like I said, I paid about a thousand dollars for this piece uh, uh, back then, man. Yeah, this is over 20 years ago. I bought this, but just kind of get you guys to know this, you know, we can imagine what this uh, painting is worth right now. And again, I, I tell people, don't get the, the actual pieces with the thought process, uh, thought process of, hey, I'm getting this and trying to make stuff grow. Because you know, if you don't know it or anything like that, you'll, you'll uh, uh, lose your head. But I have a lot of that. I do a lot of a lot of uh, abstract art, a lot of black art, a lot of African art, um, coins, things like that. But I just want you guys to start thinking outside the box. Because again, we start thinking about I can get into this investing and trading because you've seen this guy on the internet. Like I, I see it. I see it. I see the people doing it. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. And I hope I wish them the most success. But sometimes we can't get somebody, uh, and, and I don't mean this in a negative way, I'm being, I'm being, I mean this in a real way. Sometimes people just lucky and they ain't necessarily successful. And you go try to do that same damn thing with the same effort and it doesn't work for you. You try to figure out why. It's just right place, right time, you know, and we've had that happen to our lives a, a, a lot. Sometimes we have opportunities to come up. We have to take advantage of it. Sometimes we went in a position to take advantage of it. And that's just how it rolls sometimes. We just got to be realistic about what we can and can't do because at the end of the day, you know, just like I said, I had to borrow money to get that down <laughs> to get that painting because, like, man, I had to have one big Jimmy fan. I had to get it out to get it, got it and everything. And I think, you know, as far as that, the valued asset, I mean, I can just imagine, you know, again, I can uh, uh, shop it around, but, you know, I, I have my whole, all my art catalogs, the comic books, everything. I got everything insured, but I, I know from over the years of doing what I've been doing and collecting and everything like that, I'm okay. And I think a lot of you guys could be the same way uh, with doing it. Just, you know, again, thinking outside the box. I ain't talking about spending everything you have, but kind of going into that. I'm going to um, be doing a video soon because I talk about this a lot in regards to you know, how much money you need in retirement, investment, do a whole breakdown of for everybody. I think I did a video similar to that, but I want to, I haven't did one recently, you know, uh, for everybody to do. I know everybody want to go through a whole archive of 200 videos to look for. But if you get a chance, kind of look for the video in regards to how much you need in retirement, how much you need put in your 401k, those kind of videos. Yeah, I did what you need. We, you know, again, and we start talking about the whole advent of wealth creation and building wealth in there. I just think so many times people, shoot a dream to you. You can put in this money and generational wealth and all that kind of stuff. And in a way in hell, you will have enough time, especially depending on your age, to try to accumulate those kind of things. You know, we want to be realistic uh, about certain things, right? Because again, we start talking about, you know, you, you want to get, you've got stable, you 40 years old, let's say 35, 35 to 40 years old. You know, kids get a little older, getting level, got a little extra money to do it. You still talk about again you retiring at 60 playing a little 80 your lifestyle would just would need you would need uh thirty thousand dollars a year to live off of from 60 to 80 20 years thirty thousand dollars six hundred thousand dollars can you realistically save up six hundred thousand dollars from 35 to 60 or even 40 to 60. And you know damn well you can't because if you have you say that up you probably wouldn't be damn working so again we look at what we look at the, the the solution is what 
how can we generate the $2,500 a month, which will make $30,000 a year to cover us in retirement? Don't get so enamored in what you worth or what people have. I mean, that's it sounds cool, but at the end of the day, what we're trying to avoid is hitting 67, 80 years old, and we still trying to struggle to, you know, work and pay ends meet and just, you know, praying Social Security still down. We don't need to be doing that. We just want to make sure we live in uh, a healthy lifestyle because even with, you know, the whole advent of generational wealth, our children's children, um, I currently have four businesses right now, uh, four sons, one son, an Ivy League graduate, one son going to a service academy, two uh, two still in the house with me, very bright young men, and they have no interest whatsoever. They, have, they showed me now that they want to take over my businesses. Very smart guys. I see them doing their thing. But I say this to say the whole thing, you don't, you're not guaranteed you done broke your neck to save all this damn money up for your kids, to, for the generational wealth. That will have a damn thing to do with it. So the best thing is take care of yourself and make sure that, that your kids will be okay. But the main focus is taking care of you. Because if you don't take care of you, if you ain't right, ain't nothing going to be right. Okay? So again, I just want to have that conversation with you guys in regards to building wealth fast using tangible assets. Those things that we can touch, feel, and uh, be able to sh share with people we can. Because those things really don't drop in value. Okay? They typically always increase. Okay? I remember uh, uh, my grandmama uh, God rest her soul. She was a housekeeper, and the old white family gave her this big old bag of beanie babies. And uh, I don't know why my dumb ass kept them beanie babies because I was probably, hey, and they don't, you know, not what's so interesting. I was just like, hey, I'll just keep them. And I had just got an arm, man, I'm 20, 22, 23, got that bag of beanie babies. Um, the whole craze was going on and everything, didn't know what was what and everything, and you know. The rest was history. Why the va the value of it? You know, this was just my grandma looking like these folks just some garbage. I'm like, well, you know, just with that. I had my comic books, not a pack rag or a hoarder, but just kind of just thinking maybe that. Now my mind always kind of clicked like that, especially when I kind of seen you know thought about opportunities or whatever. You kind of wonder what other people are interested in, but you just never know it, guys. If you're into fashion and you know, especially like you see the people that invest, I think that's real sharp. The people that are uh, uh, into the whole uh, uh, sneaker game. I think that's cool. I think that's cool. And, you know, you know, y'all know my tight ass. I ain't paying no thousand off for no sneakers. But I'm saying if you have some shoes that are worth 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars, even more, you know, hey, man, get on top of it. Right. Go on and, you know, do it. Um, I have a, a, a humongous CD collection, a humongous CD collection. With the, they're still in the damn. Don't laugh. They still in the cases. And I still got the jacket. I just kept I, I can't sit here and tell you I had foresight to see here, this, that, and that. I got them. But if you have things like that, you got your great grandmama, old furniture, you know, maybe some old Louis, what, Louis the 14th, Louis the 15th, you know, I can't remember which Louis it is, but, you know, just having that old Queen Anne furniture and stuff. I have both of my grandmother's china cabinets that she left me when she passed. Those kind of things, like I said, they increase in value. They increase in value. So think outside the box. Don't just think we got to get rid of all that old furniture and stuff. The old coins that grandma, great grandmama had and stuff like that. Look at them. Go take them to get them appraised. That's why it's amazing how you have so many people that come in your neighborhoods. My neighborhood, it's an older, older neighborhood. Um, they have a, they give a quarter. It's a, a, a big thing. They have a garage sale. But you see all these damn investors coming from Buckhead to see, hey, y'all got coins. Y'all got some old furniture. That's what the first thing they said. They got a antique store whatever these folks come straight from damn buck here asking and it's amazing how many people looking at i'm trying to get rid of this old junk but it's a major asset to another person because again they're collectors and they're looking to provide for people that's out here looking for it and like i said again you just got to think outside the box y'all and that's why i want you guys to start doing don't be there's nothing wrong and i want to tell you not to be investing uh in stocks and trading and everything like that i am saying being realistic about who you are don't be so quick because, again, remember when we're younger, we feel like that's too long to wait. But as we get older, we feel like we ain't got enough time. But I say this to say, you, you, you pace yourselves. You do not want to be damn doing something. Next thing you know, you keep starting over, starting up, you know, starting over, over and over again. Because we know that one of the biggest things that they pushed for us when I was in grad school is that time is the new currency. Once time spent, we can't what we can't get it back. We can get some money back, but we damn sure can't get time back. So we started talking about the whole 
uh, advent of investing in compound interest, you know, one of the key, co key components of compound interest and stocks and all that stuff growing is what? Time. You're not, you, it's very hard to, 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 to grow any kind of uh, uh, stocks, uh, stock portfolio or whatever in a short amount of time. Now you could be doing some active, aggressive trading and stuff and it can happen. Absolutely. But can you fully commit to doing that? Do you have the damn aptitude or the competency? Be real how you are. Be real how you are to do that. So you still got to think out of the box. Now, at the end of the day, you still got to put some effort in to make sure that you're going to be okay in the future. I mean, that's just how it is, right? But at the end, of, you have to, you have to, guys, uh, be realistic. Don't go out there trying to spend your damn money on things you have no damn clue on, right? Okay, we know this with the suit suit. How many of y'all lost some money with the suit suit? Hey, I'm telling you. You don't know a damn thing about it, but it looks like they're making money fast and all that kind of stuff. Come on now. If, if that's the deal, everybody damn do it. But look how many people got crumbled up behind that. Come on, y'all. Think outside the box. Think outside the box plan. And again, kind of, you know, just, you know, uh, uh, just look at certain things that you have an interest in that you never thought about. Like I said, the clothes, some old paintings, uh, a TV show memorabilia, if you kind of look at it. Just kind of just start thinking about it. What may not be a big deal to you, maybe a treasure to somebody on the other side of the world. Remember, we're in, a, we're in, a, we're in the internet age. The world is flat. Like I said, though Darrell had all those uh, music memorabilia, the people that were buying his stuff were people in England. They were older collectors in England. They're very, very big uh, jazz fans. You know, stuff he had with Charlie Parker and uh, he had a Billy Holiday. I never forget, he sold for a couple grand a damn napkin that she signed. You know, get a signature authenticated. And I, and I, I know I'm wrong with that damn two grand. It was even two or five. I don't know why I'm getting the numbers mixed up. But anyway, it was a damn napkin that she had signed her name on. They could tell the Lady Day uh, signature and everything. Who, who the hell think to do that? And I'm just, and I was, I was so glad, and I was fortunate enough to, uh, to have that brother around me when I was younger. The flip side of it is I did shut the hell up and listen to him. But those kind of things we got to make sure we're taking advantage of, okay? Okay, we got to make sure we're doing that, especially we talk about in the black community. We, we uh, don't have a, a big proponent of people that are real versed in investing. And a lot of times when people actually start to get invested, they're actually trying to sell people something. So again, it's kind of that whole you know, are they trying to teach me or are they trying to scam me? So I just want people to kind of spend a little time, you know, go to your library, do some Google research, kind of, you know, look at what you got in the closet, look what you got in the attic, you know, go buy Big Mama house and look at some certain things. And again, start thinking outside the box. You'll be amazed at some of the things that we view as junk will be at, uh, will be somebody's treasure. Also, some of the things that are there, like I said, that uh, these Trey on, who did No, I got this Jay Morant. This is just from a, from a couple of years ago. I just want to share with you guys that draft. R.J. Barrett. Uh, this is that 2018 draft. Which everybody's talking about probably one of the best drafts uh, uh, in recent years. You see these guys, probably future Hall of Famers. You know, I got my Trey Youngs on deck. I got plenty of those. You know, I already know, baby. I told them guys them when he got drafted. You know, listen, guys, just think outside the box. Whatever city you are, and this is just basketball. It can be baseball, football. Uh, uh, you like a certain album right now, you know, uh, uh, just like you get that whole say Jay Z reason but out, you got the CDs, those kind of things. You, 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 it will blow your mind on who would actually look at that stuff as being a treasure now, okay? So, again, um, I want to tell you guys thanks again. This is uh, I am Deontay Burden. You tune in to uh, uh Mr. Short Dollar when we talk about building wealth faster through tangible assets. Again, Mr. Short Dollar, we talk about. Uh, entrepreneurship, personal finance, investing in business. Um, if you follow us right now, we've been streaming live on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. If you, we want to, you know, direct everybody to the YouTube channel because that's where all the over 200 videos is posted. There. If you see the information with the grants, the financing, business entrepreneur, go to different playlists and find the different information. But definitely, if you're looking at us on YouTube, hit that dollar sign in the bottom right hand corner of the video. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna scroll through, see if I see any questions. Look on TikTok, looking on Instagram. I appreciate all you, uh, everybody tuning in tonight. Uh the young lady, a diary, I don't know if it's uh, a diary or a dira, uh, uh, a diary or a dairy. Yes uh, I think you know who I'm talking to. Uh if I, in regards to the mentor, just reach out to me. Uh in the description section of the uh 
of the YouTube channel, we got the uh, all my different contact information called our office, all the different social media platform links are there. So if you got any questions, you can always reach out to us. I see uh go through this. Hello, Colleen Nash. Hey there, how you doing? First time, love how you're helping everybody out. Well, I appreciate you tuning in too. Okay, cool. So all right, cool. I ain't had too many questions. All right, cool, cool, cool. Listen, I really appreciate everybody tuning in. Let me see what we got. Where is uh tuning in tonight? And again, tonight we talked about those tangible assets. I really wanted you guys to push you guys on that. Got a lot of great information coming down the pipe, guys. So I really need everybody to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, share, 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 share the, the videos, and also tell whoever you know to subscribe to uh, Mr. Short Doll on YouTube. We got a lot, a lot more exciting information coming out. Tax season over, so your boy can breathe. We had an awesome tax season. We just hit 15,000 subscribers. We need all the help we can get to hit 20,000 subscribers. And again, I love you guys. Want you to stay safe out there. And please, 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 please continue to listen to Mr. Short Dollar. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank mm-hmm. you.